The thousands of service members and veterans who have been raped or assaulted while serving their country and then retaliated against, we appreciate your efforts in eradicating this nightmarish dynamic. I was a much younger person when I first spoke out about the tailhook assault in 1991, over 23 years ago. And I would never have imagined that I stand here today, again, calling for action so that we can stop this kind of criminal activity in our military. It was over two decades ago that I first spoke out about the culture of misogyny and impunity within the military in which sexual assault, sexual harassment are tacitly condoned and victims like me are told that's what you get if you dare to come forward. In response to public and congressional outrage over the tailhook scandal, military leaders promised me and promised this country that they had a zero tolerance for sexual assault, sexual harassment. And that same leadership assured everyone that they had the ability to eradicate this problem. Yet time and time again, that promise has proven nothing but a hollow talking point. Zero tolerance carries no weight. This crisis has only gotten worse. As you've heard from the numbers here today, I would have never imagined that someone could tell me bringing forward a complaint would have revealed 20 years later an exponentially greater problem in our military. And now victims continue to face barriers to justice at every turn. This crisis has persisted because the military justice system is not transparent, it is not fair or impartial. And until that day comes, until the day our brave service members are afforded a justice system equal to the system afforded the very civilians they swear to protect. This crisis will not end. Since I came forward, many other brave service members and veterans who are survivors of sexual assault have spoken out to tell their story and demand real, meaningful action and accountability. And that's not easy to do. All the while, countless more have continued to suffer quietly. Many silenced and sometimes abused by the very leaders charged with solving this crisis. Protect our defenders. Here's daily from service members who have been discouraged from reported, retaliated against, and harassed by their peers and their chain of command. In the few cases where the perpetrator is prosecuted, the victims are put through an arduous, grueling, and humiliating legal process. Their credibility is questioned at every turn. Their privacy is violated. And their rapist commander is given ultimately final say over whether they will have a shot at justice. No wonder most victims choose not to come forward. 62% of the women report they have been retaliated against. And over 50% of the victims don't believe anything will be done. All of this is a reflection of the structural failings of this system. As a survivor, as an advocate, as a longtime military family member, now is the time. I have waited for over 20 years for the military to live up to their promise of zero tolerance. Today, I urge Congress to stand with us now to pass the Military Justice Improvement Act. 